Welcome to another edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, Isaiah chapter 22, beginning in verse number 1. That's where we pick up our study today, Isaiah 22. And remember, this is our fifth series in the last 38 years, going through every verse of the Bible. The New Testament is done. The previous four series, along with this fifth one, is all archived at the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose your series, choose your book of the Bible, choose the section, the chapter, click and listen, or begin in Genesis and go all the way through Revelation. However you want to do it, it's all there for you. Bring your Bible, a hunger for God's Word, to thebibleversebyverse.com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth, your word is truth. Well, in the previous chapters, several chapters, God has been going down the line, down the list of nations that have rebelled against him or that have served other gods from their very beginning and have acted wickedly and God has pronounced judgment on each and every one of them. And I suppose Israel North and South were probably thinking, well, this is just great. This is wonderful. God's getting rid of all of our enemies, those heathen. Hmm. Now we come to chapter 22. The burden against the valley of vision. What ails you now? That you have all gone up to the housetops, the valley of vision. God is telling the people, not in some foreign country anymore, but in Jerusalem. He's telling them they shouldn't be standing on their flat roofs, the flat roofs of your houses. What are you up there for? Two, you who are full of noise, a tumultuous city, a joyous city, your slain men, are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. All your rulers have fled together. They are captured by the archers. All who are found in you are bound together. They have fled from afar. So God tells them they shouldn't be happy. They shouldn't be rejoicing in Jerusalem. What are you rejoicing for? The soldiers are dead. And they died in a losing cause. God tells them that their soldiers have run away. And all their rulers are cowards. And the rulers will try to run away. This is a prophecy. The rulers will try to run away. But their enemies are going to catch up to them. Verse 4. Therefore I said, look away from me. I will keep, I will weep bitterly. Do not labor to comfort me because of the plundering of the daughter of my people. And here you have Isaiah interjects a personal note. Isaiah, the one who was called by God to deliver all this bad news to everybody, including now Jerusalem. He's delivering the word of God. He says, just leave me alone. I just want to cry because I know all of the bad that's going to happen to my people. I've just given the word of God and it's not good. Boy, Isaiah sure wouldn't fit into modern charismatic and Pentecostal churches with their so-called prophets and they line all the people up in a single file and they march past the so-called prophet. He lays hands on them and tells them all wonderful that you're going to be a mother of many, and you're going to be prosperous. You're going to be a success in business. You're going to have an amazing ministry, and thousands of souls are going to get saved, and on and on the trash goes, and people buy it. Instead of studying the Word of God, which truly is the Word of God, they listen to that garbage. And those so-called prophets who speak so glibly in the name of the Lord, they will pay for it. God doesn't like having words put in his mouth. 
He doesn't like being misrepresented. He doesn't like having his name taken in vain. Oh, Isaiah, he had nothing but bad news. Like the Old Testament prophets, the faithful ones, that's what they delivered probably 90% of the time was bad news because they were sent by God to sinful people. And Isaiah said, I just want to cry because I know all the bad is going to happen to my people. He continues, he says, let me be sad. Don't try to make me feel better. The people's sins have blinded their eyes. And it is tough to be a prophet because you can see the truth and you know the truth, see. And you can tell them the truth, but they don't see it. They're not interested in it. A prophet of God who knows the word of God, sees what is coming, knows the truth, speaks the truth. And like today in modern evangelicalism and the world in general, sadly though, the professing world of Christianity, much of it, most of it, people aren't interested in truth. They're interested in entertainment. They're interested in being impressed by their so-called pastor. They're interested in rock and roll music that they wrongly label worship. It's a performance. It's not worship. I've seen it. Don't tell me it's not a performance. It's a performance. I've seen it multitude of times. It's a performance. Sin is not called sin. Hell is never mentioned. Repentance is never mentioned. It's just feel good nothing that's going to lead people to hell. And you got a man of God who stands up and proclaims the word of God. If he gets out of that place in one piece, he'll never be invited back. I know that all from experience. That's fine. But that's the situation that Isaiah found himself in. That's the situation that Jeremiah found himself in. That's the situation that Ezekiel found himself in. That's the situation that Amos and every other great prophet in Old Testament days and John the Baptist and Jesus found themselves in. It's always been that way. The great revivals in the English-speaking world, the three that have taken place, all took place while well, using the King James Version. Do, do you know that there hasn't been one single revival, spiritual revival, in the English-speaking world since the new translations came in in 1881? And that's because they're not the Word of God. They may contain little smidgets of God's Word here and there, but they're not the Word of God. They twist, they turn, they water down the Word of God. The Holy Spirit doesn't use that, not for a great revival. And there hasn't been one. And all the great revivals have been started not by people in denominations because by that time the denominations had grown cold. It was by wildfires, by people who were called by God to preach and went out and preached. And many times they weren't, in, they weren't allowed in the churches because they had become so lukewarm and cold like today that they had to put up a tent or they had to Go stand in a field or stand on a street corner. And that's how the revival started. God used them because they proclaimed the word of God. I'm so grateful that I have radio and internet and used to be on television for years. Because I'm reaching souls who aren't getting truth in their churches. Many of them, many, many of them have stopped going to church because they've given up. They just can't find one that's not full of baloney. Many of them listen to me. Many of them watch me. That's, that's fine. I'm, gr I'm grateful. The truth must be proclaimed. And when it's not going to be proclaimed by those who should be doing it in churches, somebody's got to get it out. I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm not saying a huge part, but I'm a part, and I'm glad to. Isaiah was in that situation. I'm not comparing myself to Isaiah except to say that he proclaimed the word of God, and I do. And any faithful man of God will proclaim the word of God as Isaiah did. 
and there have always been a godly remnant of faithful servants of God that Jesus prayed for and he told us to pray for. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send out laborers who will boldly proclaim his word. I pray that every single day because that's Jesus' prayer request for us. Now, they go by that I don't pray that, Lord. Father, according to Jesus' own prayer request, raise up laborers who will boldly proclaim your word, and may I always be one of them. I always tack that on too. Anyway, where are we? Verse 26, or verse 6. Elam bore the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen. I didn't read five. Sorry about that. Let's go back. For it is a day of trouble and treading down and perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountain. So God tells his people, that a time of desperation and a time of defeat and a time of confusion is coming. Always for the same reason, sin and no repentance. God says that their, their cries are going to reach the mountains. That's how loud they're going to be. It is going to be so horrible. If you could hear the cries of the people in hell, it would shake this planet. Six. Elam bore the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kerr uncovered the shield. Elam and Kerr were nations which were in the land known today as Iran. God says that soldiers are coming from Elam and Kerr. They're coming from the area we know of as Iram, Jeru Iran. So brace yourself, Jerusalem. Who, who just attacked Israel the other day? Iran fired missiles at Israel. Why? Because Israel is in rebellion against God. Seven, just like what happened back in these days. Seven, it shall come to pass that your choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. In other words, Enemy armies are surrounding Jerusalem and they're getting ready to attack. Verse 8, verse eight he removed the protection of Judah. You looked in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. In other words, God had removed his protection from his people because they were in rebellion. That, he warned them many, many years before this and many times in the uh, interval that he was going to do this if they didn't repent. They didn't, and he is. Nine, you also saw the damage to the city of David. That's Jerusalem, that it was great. And you gathered together the waters of the lower pool. You numbered the houses of Jerusalem and the houses you broke down to fortify the wall. You also made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but you did not look to its maker nor did you have respect for him who fashioned it long ago. The Israelites did a lot to try to stabilize their life and normalize their life. They did everything but what they should have done. They were given the Holy Land by God, and the only way to keep it was to turn to God and submit to his lordship. We'll stop right there until next time. This has been Michael Moret reminding you to stay in the word and stay in prayer. Pray for me. Pray for God's word. Go to the BibleVerseByVerse.com. Study with me at your pace, at your convenience. And when you get, take a break, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may live, live, lead. Let's get out God's word together for as long as we can, to as many as we can, as much as we can. Thank you for being a part of this ministry. Thank you for studying with me. Until next time, so long, everyone.